Hello, my name is Lance Wilkinson. Today, I'm here to talk to you about how to use the smart board. As you can see, this smart board is already turned on. However, if it were not, all you would have to do is hold down the power button over here on the bottom right side of the board for a couple of seconds and it would come on. Now that your smart board is turned on, the next thing you need to worry about is getting it calibrated. This is a very simple process. All one must do to calibrate a smart board is press these two buttons in front of the eraser and hold them down for two seconds. This will bring up a calibration icon. All you have to do is place your finger in the center and hold it down for two seconds. The icon will move around the screen. Continue to press the icon to calibrate your smart board. Your smart board should now be calibrated. This will make sure that whenever you write on the screen, your writing lines up on the screen with your pen. It doesn't appear that we have any objects on the screen right now, but as a matter of fact, we do. This is a process of object animation. Working with text and objects or pictures in a smart board is extremely important. Let me show you how it works. If I were to ask students who the President of the Confederate States of America was during the Civil War, I, would get, I might get varied answers. However, I can provide feedback to the students using object animation. So whenever I present the question of who the President of the Confederate States of America was during the Civil War, students would respond. Well then, to acknowledge their response, if they were to say Jefferson Davis, I would click the animation, and guess who pops up? It's Mr. Jefferson Davis. So if the students who said Jefferson Davis say his name, he pops up on the screen. This reinforces their correct answer. However, if someone were to mistake the Confederate president for somebody else, I would not bring Jefferson Davis up on the screen. Now if I were to ask who the commander of the or rather who the President of the United States of America was during the Civil War, I would bring up Mr. Abraham Lincoln. All I have to do is go over here, click on Mr. Lincoln's picture, and he pops up. Therefore, you have object animation in a smart board. There's also another important feature that a smart board has. It's called the Infinite Cloner. Let's check it out. Here we have a map of Japan. Japan is a major world power with many cities, like every other country. If you were going to teach students where these cities are, you could use the infinite cloner to have them drag a star over to these different cities to show that they know where they are. For instance, if I was to say to a student, show me where Tokyo is on the Japanese map. They could come up to the screen, pick a star, and drag it over to where Tokyo would be. Tokyo is located roughly right there on the Japanese, on the map of Japan. Now, as you can see, the star remains there and right here. That's an important feature of the infinite cloner. Now, if I were to ask where the Japanese city of Kyoto was, I could ask another student to come up and they could select a different star. And there's where Kyoto is located. Hiroshima and Nagasaki also have extreme important historical implications. I could ask students to show me where those are too. Hiroshima, located roughly right here, and Nagasaki, a coastal city around this area, I believe. So there you have it, folks. An infinite cloner and infinite possibilities. Another important feature of the smart board is the ink layer. Whenever you bring up a page that's not part of the, of not necessarily a computer program like Word or the notebook for the smart board, they have what's called an ink layer. This means that whenever you write, it's not permanently saved like it would be in something else. 
so you can go ahead and erase that. You can use this to bring important points to attention when browsing the internet. For instance, here, I don't know if you can see it from very far away, but I have the, char the Meiji Charter Oath. This document was a matter of historical dispute in Japan during the late 1800s. Some saw it as a democratic document. Others saw it as a model of German authoritarianism. However, if you look at the Meiji Charter Oath, you can br I can bring attention to the democratic elements. For instance, the Meiji Charter Oath number two, and here I'm going to star it so you know it's important. All classes high and low shall unite in vigorously carrying out the administration of affairs of state. All classes, democratic. Knowledge sh shall be sought throughout the world so as to strengthen the foundations of imperial rule. Here, we have a model of autocracy. Therefore, by bringing attention, attention to certain points on the smart board, students can see the importance of them. Finally, incorporating multimedia in Notepad is extremely important. However, when looking up ways to do this, I was directed to a website, a file converting website site called Zambar. This website would not convert, convert YouTube videos anymore. So I kept searching and I found one called KeepVid. The Wi-Fi itself denotes this website as being unsafe. Therefore, I could not find out how to incorporate multimedia into this production. If anybody finds out, please share this information with, with me. I hope you've enjoyed my smart board presentation and I hope we keep these amazing devices in the classroom. Thank you.